Okay. Booyah. I think we are live. Tested, test, test, test. All right. We're, I appreciate everyone uh, coming by. We're going to talk about... Uh, oh, there's some sound in my head. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, because um, there's nothing like hearing yourself in the headphones. That's like the worst thing ever. <laughs> Let's go rewind. Uh, we're going to take a look at Glenlivet, which is uh, one of the first distilleries that I actually got into um, as a scotch drinker a while, while back. Um, I did start off with uh, a blend in Isla called Smokehead, but at the same time, I uh, also kind of dabbled in Glendronic, which is a sherry, uh, sherry scotch, and I dabbled with uh, Glenlivet 12, which is pretty much a basic... Uh, I'd say it's not the lowest of their core. They have a Founders Reserve that's actually even um, lower in price and uh, doesn't have an age statement. It's what we call an NAS and a non-age statement. Um, anyway, um, the 12 is... Uh, I didn't even think they had the Founders Reserve at the time that I found the 12. This That was more of a... I think it's a more recent um, offering that they decided to go with. But anyway. Oh. I appreciate you guys uh, coming by. I, I just saw a couple people pop up on the uh, screen there. Um, if you missed the intro, we're going to be looking at Glenn Livid. And uh, this could be a controversial show because typically I have a lot of uh, folks that are really big into the uh, Campbelltown, Isla, Speyside uh, deal is kind of a... Uh, I mean, it's fine. It's just funny because uh, I don't know how well it's going to do with some of the uh viewers i guess we'll, we'll call them uh more like uh they also get on the channel and chat and have some input about what how they feel about it uh, i remember when i was leaving off with the last show which was a uh, log of one someone i forgot who it was exactly but someone said when when there's a glenn Livet show i have a lot to say and i'm i'm trying to remember who that was because I don't know if it was a negative thing or if it was, they were a big fan. Um, it's one of those stories that, that I hear mixed reactions about. Uh, personally, I've had a good time with uh, the bottles that I've got, and I have had my share of the core. Um, when you get up to the higher aged ones, we'll get into a little bit, the um, like the 18... Return for value might be kind of interesting. We'll discuss that in more uh, detail. Uh, a Las Cos, good to see him in. <laughs> DHS says Jägermeister review time. Oh man, I hope that uh, you're not uh, equating the Glenlivet to uh, a Jägermeister review. <laughs> 18 is a great value. 21, 25, not so much. Yeah. Uh, I, sh I guess the value wasn't the right word I should have chose. I guess the wow factor for the 18 maybe wasn't as there as some might have hoped. But you get the kind of same return, I think, with the Glenfiddich 18, um, Glamorangy 18. Some of, you know, a lot of the uh, Space Side Highland groups that it it's, it's really, when you get to the 18, it's kind of a hit or miss, I've noticed. Uh, and everyone has their oddball character. Like with Springbank, I think it was the 15, if I'm not mistaken. Um, with uh, Lafroig, it's the it's one called the 1815, which uh, doesn't do too well in uh, many eyes. Uh, for uh, Highland Park, the Dark Origins was met with some some back and forth. Uh, Love it, hate it reviews. I, I remember, uh, but eighteen is not a well. It's solid. Yeah. Hey, Dream. Good to see you, man. How's California? <laughs> and uh, you'll have to step in here. Uh, and, and you too, DHS. Now, some of these I have not uh, partaked myself, but a lot of them I have. And hopefully, we can fill in the gaps with uh, a lot of you guys. I trust, definitely trust uh, DHS and Dreams. Uh, palettes and uh, experience and some of these to give a little input see wh where we go uh, let's dive into it first I'm going to start off with a, a little taste from um, a friend of mine 
that sense something and you're probably looking at this thinking there is no color Harley with that but that's a good thing because it's no coloring non shell filter this is a uh, the Glenlivet uh, Nadura first fill FF0115 to be precise. It's a 59.8% um, bottle from uh, everyone. Yeah, Glenlivet's what we're going to be talking about tonight, uh, Dram. Yeah, sorry, the Glenlivet. Uh, do you remember who it was, DHS, that I remember when I. Um, I was leaving the, I think it was the Lagavulin show. It might have been the show before the last. Uh, I mentioned the fact that I might decide to do the Glenlivet, and I think someone's, they had a lot to say about it. But I can't remember if it was a positive or a negative thing. Uh, give them a five and move on. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Now, I will say, and I, and I did preface the show with this, is that, you know, when I started, even though I started with the, the Isla, the Smoke Kid, and, and dabbled a little bit with Glentronics Cherry, I also, my first, I'd say, real just entry to basic scotch was the Glenlivet 12. And I have to tell you, uh, even if you don't think it's the, the best 12 that you've ever had, for the price point, and for what it is, and I, I'm a huge pineapple fan, and one thing that I will say for Glenlivet, not all of them have pineapple, but there is that is one of their... Um, it's, it's like just something I just, I just gravitate to. It's like I love ham. Pineapple goes well with ham. Uh, Hawaiian pizza, you know, every once in a while, has some Canadian bacon and some pineapple on it. Um, pina coladas, how could you not like those? pineapple cottage cheese and pineapple i love pineapple so when i started on my scotch journey since i'm not a big corn fan i'm not a huge bourbonite even though this is uh my original home um i decided you know i'm gonna i'm gonna try this and get into it and, and sure enough when i nosed the the 12 for the first time it was like wow that 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 tropical note just does something with the malted barley. It's just like, uh, it's a really nice marriage of the two. Uh, Deej says, says uh, I'm not sure to be honest. I'm a fanboy of Glenlivet as they really were my starter scotch. Yeah, same here. Uh, Porta Glenlivet 16, Adora 56.1. Lost Cost got uh, the 0813Y specific. Yeah, this is the uh, the FF0115 59.8 first fill in Adura. Uh, not the peated one. I have had the peated one. Hey, bourbon shenanigans, whiskey shenanigans. Sorry, good to see you, man. Uh, I haven't seen you in a while, so I'm glad you got the chance to stop by. Oh man, I love that 16 Enduro. So said they don't still do that one. Yeah, I, I would agree because this is the one that's not in a 16 year. Unfortunately, I should have cleared the shelf and they were gone when I returned. <laughs> oh man, the uh, yeah, this one is not is an NAS. But so far on the nose initially, it, it, I like it. Now, some people might think it's a bit faint if you're if you're used to like the noses. And this is cast strength, you know, 59, I'm sorry, yeah, 59.8. So, I mean, it's going to have some hotness to it. But I think it's got some wonderful uh, pineapple was, the, of course, the first note. But like some really sh like shaved toasted coconut. Some like cream, honey. Oh man, it's it, I, I just think it's like it's got cherries even in there. I think the ABV does help the the nose a lot. Yeah, I started with Glenlivet. Don't really buy it anymore though from Dram. Yeah. Yeah, strong pina colada type thing. I think I, th I think the uh, oh you do have the sixteen endure. Do you have you have it open already there, Dram? If it, and if not, we might have to pop it open since you're not really a a diehard uh, fan. <laughs> it sounds similar. I bet your alls is, is a bit better because of the age. The pina endure is awesome. Now this is what we'll get into that in a second. This is where the subjectivity sometimes comes in uh bought an independent bottle of Glenlivet the other day but that's different yeah that's one thing i never tried as an independent bottling of, of theirs uh it, it, i bet it's interesting i wonder oh i'll take that back i do have an smws version of uh that's a uh, Glenlivet. that's that's really good actually i'm not sure i've ever tried a Glenlivet. really 
That's surprising. Is this Mike or is this somebody else? Because sometimes I, I know there was a, a bourbon shenanigans and a whiskey shenanigans and somebody gave somebody a, a name and, and all that. And I don't know if that's Mike or not. Let me know. I bought a signatory Glenville on Sunday. First full Sherry, 12-year-old. Hey, okay, Mike. Good to see you, man. You, I, you Okay, this is important. Now, listen up, Mike. This is no joke. I know you're a big fan of the Ball Blair taste. And Ball Blair, especially the 99, that's that's in the 83 even, um, the 90. Uh, I think you were the 90 fan. Uh, it has a, like some tropical fruit going on, a really nice mix. It's got some sweetness to it. I like a sweet dram. I think that's why I, I don't mind the the intensity of the sweetness of a Glenlivet. If you're not a fan of of the um, of a, a majorly sweet dram, you might not like it as much. But I think it's it's badass. I, I like it. Uh, if you do like that, uh, this uh, the Glenlivet Distillery has that type of of profile. Now, while while I say that they're Older stuff is as good as like the old stuff from Ball Blair. That could be debatable, but if you just the sheer, the sheer, um, what's the word for it? Similarities between the two are are pretty damn close. Uh, I think on profile. Um, now you know the twenty-five year old Glenlivet versus the eighty-three Ball Blair that is definitely something I think that would be a, uh, I think the ball blur might win out, but the price is a complete major difference. So that you have to take into account as well. And we'll get to value in a second, but um, I'm actually having a sample mic. Uh, so I, I mean, the bottle's not going to help you. This is what it looks like. If you want to see it, though. it's the Clivet Nadura. Uh, first fill FF0115 uh, 59.8. If you put that in whiskey base, you will um, it will come up with a nice uh, kind of an overview of the one I'm drinking. Now, they're talking about something a little different, a little more specialized. Uh, DHS and DRAM have a 16-year-old version of this type of offering, but it, it's definitely got the age uh, factor. If you do... Uh, Put in Glenlivet first fill selection in, into uh, the uh, whiskey base uh, website, it, in, it, or just put FF0115 in there. It will show you the exact bottle that I'm tasting. And uh, the Naduras really all look really similar. They just have uh, uh, two labels, basically the name, and then they have like a profile of the first fill selection and what cask it's from and what's the ABV and what bottle number and all that kind of stuff. But this is first fill American white oak casks. Uh, so far, the nose is lovely. Uh, bottle in 2015. It's, um, I talked about the, the nosing notes already, but I know where another 16 year one is though. Ooh, those are hard to find. I've heard, uh, Drams and the Door is not open. Well, if you know where another one is, maybe, uh, give it a, maybe this is the night to give it a try, Dram. I'm going to need your expertise here in the second anyway, uh, some overall uh, knowledge and, and the more, uh, I haven't had the, that specific one. I have had the peated before, um, and I've had um, the code. I've had the 18, the 15, the 12, the founders. Um, trying to think. The Signet's on orange. You almost said the Signet, but that's a different distillery. I'm trying to think of what the, some of their other ones are. Um, we'll go back to that in a second because I do have a list here with uh, all their offerings in it. Enigma I haven't tried yet. Cypher I haven't tried yet. I am interested in what people have, if you've had the uh, the Cypher or the uh, Enigma, please let me know what you thought about it in the comments. That's going to be really helpful because uh, I have cracked the code, but I haven't touched those other guys yet. Alpha is another one I've heard that uh, is in that same kind of series uh, that they do. Um, but between the Peteds and the other stuff we should be able to have pretty good coverage i have to say all right so just to get get you in the, in the scheme of what we do typically with these uh, 
distillery reviews is we're going to go through taste, consistency, variety, age, statements, uh, availability, value, and the craft. Now, um, let's see. I, I had a question for you guys. I had a I was going through like an idea where I thought maybe um, I might do some some short videos just just that will still be live but won't be like a, a chat involvement type thing like I do with you guys on Tuesday nights but just going uh, kind of on the side I thought about doing like just focusing on a distillery's core I'll call it like um, we'll just say Lago Vons is the last uh, distillery we looked at I'll say uh, Lago Vons uh, core um, ratings and recommendations and I'll go through just the core talk about them briefly about each one why I like or why not why and why not you know to try them and then maybe give like a just a flat score at the end not really like a nosing tasting palate finish thing because doing three in a in a core is is takes a long time to do it justice but I've had you know the eight the 16 the distillers edition so many times I've got the notes memorized I even document them when I write them down so um I'm thinking of maybe doing it that way and going just a, a five, eight, I'm trying, I'll probably have to give it to 10 minutes, like a short, just 10 minute thing and putting it out there. I wonder, do you think that would work guys? If I did that maybe for some, uh, just the core ranges for us uh, and just keep it concise to the point. I'm not going to, I don't have time to edit and all that mess, but if I just record them live, shoot them straight and then put them out there, I'm thinking that might be something that would be a, uh, a good thing to digest that brings me to my first question with you guys um when you look at someone's core and and lagavulin is a good example of that because when i think of their core i think of the eight the um 16 the distillers edition to me that's the one that you always see at the store those three that's what I would just consider it. Now, some people might consider the 12 cast strength as part of their core and even the 25, but where, how do you determine, you know, what someone's actual true core is? Like, even if you go to their website, uh, which is run by Diageo, you'll see like when one place it'll say the, just the, the 16 in the distillers edition. Another place I found said the eight, the, eight, the, the, 16 distal edition and another place included all of everything that they've ever released so how do you guys do that when you're trying to determine what a core range from a particular distillery is just shoot it in the comments if you don't mind good to see a peter too as well the code and others i didn't care for yeah i don't like uh, glenvis newer line only glenvis i own is an adora 16 year okay well, everyone's got this Nadura 16. <laughs> I've heard very good things about it. Uh, this is why I asked Dram to go ahead and give it a crack, because uh, if he's not really into the distillery ha hardcore, but um, he's looking for something to try with us, then I think it's a good one to... And, and feel free to put out the notes there that you're getting Dram. Nose, palette, finish kind of thing. This one's lovely on that. So let's go in neat. Uh, this is hot, though. This is going to be 59.8, so, I mean, but I always believe in trying it bare minimum first and then, you know, add a little water on the side. So that's the way we're going to do it. Ooh. That'll wake you up a little bit. Hmm. Wow. Wow. I used to work with a guy who drank whiskey. He kept a bottle of Canadian Mist in his test drawer and was constantly lit. Wow. <laughs> this old helmet. Welcome to the channel, man. <laughs> Ooh, it's good. This it's, it's it's rough around the edges because of the heat, but I mean overall profile on the taste is good. Definitely get um your you know, you still got your pineapples there. You're, you still got some really nice cherries. There's now the lemon and the and more of um, pith is coming in, but not too bitter, thankfully. It uh, could use some some a little bit, like a like a couple of drops. I'm gonna do just to 
not tame it, but at least, you know, take it down a notch just a little bit. I really appreciate the fact that they did this natural color and not chill filtered. Um, I mean, thank goodness, because I do want to want to see what it's supposed to look like. Uh, there's nothing worse than, you know, getting something that just has stuff in there that just doesn't belong. <laughs> Cora would technically be the ones that aren't limited edition, so I guess technically the leg 12 isn't. What about, would you consider like a really uh, high-aged one? Like um, the Lagavulin 25, uh, 27, 30, they have a 37? I mean, are those in the core too? Because, I mean, they're, I, I don't know if they're limited per se, DHS. I'm just curious to see how, what you think about that. I do agree with you, though. It's it's shouldn't be, you know, something that... Uh, oh, it was a one-off. Okay. Hmm. What is this one? I'm looking online for it. Oh, this is the... Uh, the one I'm, I'm personally doing is the... Uh, just look up uh, whiskeybase.com and put in FF... 0115 Glenlivet, and it should come up with this uh, Glenlivet Nadura first fill selection. Um, the ones that they're looking at, uh, if you want to look up that one, is the uh, the Glenlivet Nadura 16 first fill. That's the one that uh, Dram and um, DHS, I believe, have. And Peter. It says like Peter's got it too. I'm not sure if he's drinking any of it though. They are not in my core. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to figure out how because um, when people say core, I think it means something different sometimes uh, from one person to another, only based off of how they're looking at it. But I'm glad that uh, you said that the 25 was a one-off, so that can't be part of the core if it's just a, a one-year release so I, i'm going to consider the cores just being the eight the 16 and the distillers edition and then holding that as the three that i would do a review on basically if i did our big i would do the no the ugadal the quarry and, and the uh, 10 year those four i would consider their core um so i think i'm gonna I might do like a quick 10 minute video on that um just to sum up the core talk about a couple notes uh, of each one and try to just uh, give an overview of, of why and why not. And uh, some of them will have just a why and some of them will just have a why not, I'm sure, when I get to certain uh, certain core offerings of certain uh, distilleries just from... But um, I thought about throwing like a Metacritic thing because I, I was thinking about maybe researching some other like reviewers like I do here on video. I know about three reviewers that do some really good uh, write-ups, maybe combining like uh, a few of each with my own and give it like a, a Telex medic critical whiskey score of some sort. I thought that might be uh, something that might be worthwhile doing, but I had to, I already tried it and I had to convert a lot of math. Like what people use different scales to rate their stuff. And some people do four stars. Some people do them by letter grade. Some people do them by uh, uh, one out of fives. And some people even do one out of a hundred and with, with a numeric number. So it's like, yeah, not one includes a lock of 37. Yeah. That thing is way out of my uh, league uh, cost wise. So I'd love to taste it, though. Hint, hint, Diageo, if you're watching. <laughs> They're probably not watching because Glenlivet is uh, back to that. It's uh, Pernod Ricard, I believe, right? Is that how you pronounce that? Pernod Ricard? Ricard, probably. If it's en français, I'm guessing. It sounds like a French name, so I'm... I'm uh, Yes, I too will take the multi thousand dollar free whiskey. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh my goodness, uh, just to have a sip. I mean, they don't even have to send me a whole bottle, just send me like a, a freaking a salsa bottle, like about that big, enough for like a, 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 a decent dram, and that I'll call it a day. I won't ask them for another thing. <laughs> That's all I want. It's like probably. I don't know, $20 worth. I don't know how to show you, break it up. Probably a lot more than that. Probably a couple hundred, but it won't kill them. How many people are going to be buying 
you know, a log of 137 anyway, right? Anyway, back to the, uh, with a little bit of uh, water, let it sit for a bit. That's, uh, it's a little bit easier to, uh, to get into on the, um, the fruits are there, but man, I don't know. I'm trying to debate on like, or something, it's like, I don't know, like a slight bitter note, tart, bitter, but not horrible. I think the water, like just a couple of drops really helped with uh, the overall, but hmm, I don't know. This one here, uh, the lowest price it looks like is about 57 euros. It's only found in about three online shops in Europe right now, um, Netherlands and uh, Germany. I don't think it's something that you can buy in America that easily, but don't quote me on it. Um, let me look at Wine Searcher as a good site. Thousand Corks is another one if you're not familiar with those. Uh, let's look at uh, Glen. It might not be the exact same bottle, but I'm just going to look up a Glen uh, Glenlivet Nadura uh, first fill and see what comes up for uh, the United States, at least, if anything. There's a first fill 12 in uh, Connecticut for 50 bucks. That's very low. Um, in uh, California, 70. Uh, another one, California, 70. Missouri, 75. Uh, DC, wow, that's there's something wrong with that. Oh, it's a case. I was going to say, it's $440, but I was like, no. <laughs> it's a case of six bottles. So that's the reason. Uh, but Potomac, which is here in D.C., has it for 75 Up in uh, Minnesota, A Spirits, they have it for 80 So it uh, it fluctuates uh, a bit, as you could tell, depending on your, your uh, area. Because in New Jersey, it's 81 to 85 uh, In Rhode Island and in Massachusetts, it's 90 it, It's all over the place. Florida, it's 95 So... Uh, I mean, it keeps going up and up. New York is probably the most expensive at 110. So, I mean, it's uh, it fluctuates big time uh, across the board. Uh, this one, um, I'd say, would probably be, as far as value-wise, that's a tough one. But I'd say probably around 70, 60 to 70. I think it might be worth a taste. But I tell you what, it's it, it's this one is is good, and I really appreciate everyone to let me taste this. By the way, uh, I'll let him have some Aaron 16 uh, that I had an old bottle of, and uh, we work right next to each other, so we just traded some sauce on the side, and um, he wasn't into the, into that as, uh, as much as I thought he might be, but it is kind of a schizophrenic type of a dram, the Aaron 16. The newer stuff is better. Um, but with that said, on this one, I like the – I love the nose is the best feature of it. The palate is, is decent, but it starts out better than it ends. The finish is extremely dry. And the tartness, the bitterness is, is, is I think – Reminiscent of a younger whiskey. I think that's what it's suffering from. I mean, it's good ABV. I really appreciate the ABV. It's got some nice effervescence to it. It's got some nice white, white pepper even. Um, it's funny. It's like, I don't know if I like it neat better or if I like it with a... I mean, it needed a couple of drops because it's extremely hot. But I wonder if it... The, the, the bitterness kind of subsided a bit, but it also has more dryness now, it seems like. It's kind of like one of these, I'm fighting with it. That's probably the Nadura Oloroso matured. Yeah, OL is uh, Oloroso matured. Look for uh, FF for first fill, and uh, this particular one is the uh, 0115. But anyway, um, not... 
not the absolute best thing I've ever had, but I'd, I'd love to try the 16 year old version of this. I think that if this was the 16 year old version, like Dram's got it and uh, Peter and uh, DHS, then I probably would be uh, in a in a bit of a little bit bit of a better mood. But it's 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 okay. It's it's a good dram. If one one out of uh, you know, if I had to do a one to five uh, rating, uh, five star th kind of thing, or I guess it's just probably stick to my grades since I'm doing an ABC kind of thing. I think it's a uh, overall. I think I I think it's a uh, it's a little bit above average, but I'm not going to go crazy. I think it's like a B minus, B to a B minus, on this guy. Would I seek my own bottle out of this particular one? No, but would I seek a sixteen-year-old version of this out? Hell yeah, because I do like the nose a lot, and the pro and the the beginning of that palette is really good. Just have to drink more of it faster, I guess. So I love that beginning. <laughs> it's kind of a it's, it's kind of a tough one. Let me see. Um, DHS says, yeah, they have a young first Phil Olorosa at cast strength. I like to add a slash or mix 50-50 with an Endure 16 to give it more of an aged flavor profile. When you say I like to add a slash or mix 50-50 with it, are you talking about the, the, the Oloroso version with the 16? Uh, DHS. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, but I want to make sure before I soak it in. Um, Peter says to him, uh, exactly the bubbler 91 to 2018 was 165 Canadian and the bubbler 825 is uh, 500 plus. Yeah. It's it's mad. The uh, price uh, deal. I miss the old uh, price uh i missed the old ball blair already but i'm not going to go into details just yet uh hopefully some of these other bottles will be good the new ball blair stuff i haven't hey uh, mike have you tried the ball blair 12 the 15 or the 18 or the uh 25 the new stuff yet from uh, tybev i'm just curious if uh stephanie has uh floated a couple new bottles uh your all's way she should if she hasn't already uh because i know you guys have, have uh worked a lot with with their group as far as like getting the word out and and stuff like that so hopefully they uh you know give you some props on the side at least or something um the 0813y review is on whiskey base okay a bit of mix of the 15 year and then Duro would make a great whiskey. Uh, are you talking about the French oak uh, of the Glenlivet uh, DHS? I'm just curious. 50 50 Oloroso with the 16, yes, yeah. Okay, about to crack this Dura 16 bottle at 2014, 60.2. That sounds great, man. I have not yet. Steph said that it will be here in the States early 2020. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't seen it on the shelf yet. I've seen the new Mortlock series, which I've got my eye on the 20 year old. It's a it's a couple hundred dollars though, so I'm kind of like, I don't know about that. But um I'm, I'm, I'm eyeing it. Might attack it possibly soon. And I've seen the new old Pulteney stuff, which I like the 15, but 17 and 21 are 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 sorely missed uh, i'm hoping that uh next time i'd get a try of their 18 and their uh uh any 25 that i'll uh, be into it as much as i was with the uh, other ones and the price point change could be interesting yeah it sounds like a decent blend a dhs you'll have to put that on the spreadsheet don't forget the blending the blending spreadsheet when you get a chance i'm uh curious yeah the 15 is solid good. The, the new 15 is as, is it as good as the old 17? That's where I'm kind of like, I'm not sure. I'd love to do a taste, uh, a shootout with old Pulteney's old uh, 17 and their new 15 and see like a blind test to see which one I would like better because those are like my favorites, I think. I mean, I like the 21, of course, but... Uh, since they don't even have a new 21, they kind of just go from the 12, 15, 18, I think 25. Um, that's going to be a, uh, a nice uh, miss. Yeah, it's 17 behind me up there somewhere. 
uh, up th that way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the old 17, man. That was my favorite. For 120, 130 at tops, it is, it is solid. It's on there. Oh, okay. Thanks, DHS, for putting on the blending spreadsheet. If you didn't know, Mike, we've got a, um, a blending spreadsheet that we that I got up. If you go to discussions, you'll see it in the list of my channel. And it's interactive where you can click on it and you can add your own uh, blends and just put white percent of what you put in there, color code it with the legend uh, of you know which one you thought was great versus which one you thought was horrible. And, uh, you know we'll learn from each other and, and have a, a record of what works and what doesn't work. I've already got a couple interesting experiments in there with a, a bad uh, experiment with a Lafroig and a, a Glentronic that I thought was going to work well, but it, it was not because a Laroso uh, does not go well with uh, the Lafroig P I found out the hard way. <laughs> I traded my old little Pony 21 for four roses, 125. I could see why, man. My mom is a huge fan of four roses. Uh, the new, um, she wants me to find her the sugar daddy. Uh, uh, it's like a, Oh, what year was it? It had like a bunch of different years. I can't remember if it was an OESB. I think it was one of those. And, um, I've had an LESB before, and I had an OESB at some point, like a few years ago. But uh, this particular bottle, man, I haven't seen it anywhere. I don't know if it's because she jumped the gun and it's too early to find it, uh, or it's already passed for this this go around, and, and I'll never find it for under four hundred dollars, or or what the deal is. But uh, I'm hoping I could find her a bottle of that at some point. <laughs> that's not, you know, four hundred dollars plus. If you see it, Mike, let me know. <laughs> I kind of want to take the jump and blend a crappy Glentronic Batch 7. Be nice. <laughs> I, I I remember the Batch uh, the batch 7, the cast strength, uh, being kind of one of those mixed reviews uh, bottles. The earlier batches did really well with the 18-year and see if it adds the proof that the age makes a bottle a uh, better bottle, but that's a gamble. Uh, crappy was nice. <laughs> I figure it out. I can see some of those uh, for R. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, look at the one that they call the Sugar Daddy uh, version. I think it's like a 16 or a 20 something year old. I can't remember the, the age uh, on it particularly, but it's the new one that just came out this past year. And um, she's been asking about it. And I'm like, well, I've, I've looked and I've I found a place like for three or four hundred dollars that has it, but I don't. I don't think she's going to, you know, want to go that crazy with it. If I found it for a couple hundred dollars, just get it for myself, you know. But um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I have the newest 4R special release. Ooh, I bet that's, uh, I bet that's what she's looking for there, DHS. Uh, well, I, I think you're, aren't you kind of close by to Louisville? Oh, that's right. You're probably up there in Covington, Cincinnati, if I remember correctly. Maybe I'll have to time it and, and do a, a drive-by on the way to visit her sometime and see if I can surprise her with something. I don't mind. Uh, it is worth uh, 300 I hate to hate to say. Okay, well, maybe I might, I might splurge. And if you find it or have an extra bottle, maybe I'll splurge and, and get her a, a present or something. <laughs> It's hard to shop for mom sometimes, you know. Uh, I, I usually don't spend that kind of money, but it's one once in a lifetime kind of thing. Sometimes, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, Peter says DHS that might work and cut some of that sweetness back. I've opened a batch four and bottle one was amazing. Oh man, I would love to be able to try some of those earlier Glendronic versions. I'm sure I'll see another one of those. Yeah, well. Hey, Samuel Cass, good to see you, man. Thanks so, so much for stopping by. It's been a while. I know you popped by last time, I think, briefly at the end, so I'm glad you got by a little quicker. I better get back I better get back into the show. We've been going off and going off and I get I get so uh into like thrown off on tangents sometimes. So let's talk taste first so thinking about your great times with the old 12 and the 15 you know you got your feet with with the 12 the Glenlivet 12 and you and you liked it and you're like well maybe I'll go for the step up the 15 French oak see where that leads me I liked it I, I uh, usually could find it at a bar pretty easily too which is nice we'll talk about that in a little bit but uh it uh 
it's a it's a nice step up from the uh, just the base twelve, and then of course you got the eighteen. Uh, Vanilla Bomb is super floral from from Dram dude. Okay, he's doing the the Nadura sixteen. Vanilla Bomb, huh? <laughs> super floral. Is that is that what's the word uh, I'm looking for here? Dram, is that like in your wheelhouse right now? Do you like vanilla super floral kind of stuff, or is that like you're kind of like ah, I wish I didn't open it. <laughs> Do you have do you have opener's remorse? <laughs> mm. Also taking account um some of those, you know, other ones like the code, the alpha, the enigma, the cipher. Also taking account any of the uh, more specialized uh, bottles you might have tried. They do uh, I already talked about their core, but they also have um uh, like a single cast Pullman Club car edition. They have a cognac, uh, which is a new 14-year-old. That's part of their, I think, their new core. Unless it's a limited edition. I don't know if it's a, a permanent fixture. I did try to do some homework before I started this, but it was really tough to find um, specific information on that particular one other than it looks like it's part of their lineup right now. Sam Lucas almost bought a 25 today. Wow. No, it's nice and refreshing. Cool. Okay. I'm glad that it's working out at least. Uh, if you've ever had, a, have any of you ever had a um, oh, Lost Causes had, uh, it sounded like uh, some of these I was talking about. The uh, Has anyone ever had the single cask edition? Like there's a Sherry Butt uh, 14 year cask and they have an Oak Barrel 16. Uh, has anyone ever had one of those single cask editions? I'm just curious because those are, or any of the really high end 50 year old stuff, those are the ones that I have not had my own personal um, taste. But I've had I've had the 21 and the 18 down. Um, I've had the 25 down to the uh, the 12 and founders. So I've kind of got their core covered. It's just tough to get some of these single cask, uh, you know. Deals. Most high end I've had was the 21 Archive. Yeah, that's the one I was just talking about. Um, how about you, Dram? Have you ever tried any of their single cask edition stuff? I'd love to. I mean, it's it's some it's some like this, but um, I've I've never seen it, but I haven't actually sought it out, so I can't really say uh, what the availability on those higher end ones are. I can speak to. Um, my local place that has uh, the Glenlivet stuff, they uh, carry the 12, the four, the uh, 12 first fill. The 12 year also has a new first fill, which is interesting. Uh, Peter's checking. I uh, appreciate. Oh, he already checked. No. Okay. Well, we tried to cover that. If anybody, uh, if no one in the chat has ever tried it, if you come on later, watch the show. If you comment after the fact, I will put your score uh, in with the uh, information that I've got. So if you have already tried a single cask edition, let me know what you thought about it in the comments, even after the fact, after the video is posted. And let me know what you thought, the goods, the bads. If you can rate it 1 to 10, that's great too. And I'll take it into account and put it in with our other uh, scoring. Um, but the, they have the 14... Uh, they have, uh, which is the newer one, they have the uh, 15, the 18, the 21, the 25, the Code, the Enigma, the Founders Reserve, the Nadura, the Nadura First Fill. So they have a really good range of uh, what I would say their core plus uh, one, two, three, you know, extra special bottles that I, I would, you know, call... Uh, yeah, the, the, it's, the 25 is, is one of those that uh, I've heard kind of mixed uh, things. It sounds like the if you're going to invest in Glenlivet, I can't speak for the single cask editions because that those are uh, a unicorn at this point. But uh, if you're going to go from, uh, hey, T. Smith, good to see you, and from Tennessee, <laughs> um, if you're going to go – in on on investing in the distillery i definitely would stay from the the you know the founders reserve i probably wouldn't even bother if you're already an experienced drinker if you're new to whiskey 
could give it a try, but the, the 12 is so reasonably priced. I'm, I might even skip the founders and go straight in with the, uh, the, uh, the, the 12, the, the 15, I can definitely say, uh, all the way up to like the 18 is where I would stop. Maybe, uh, 21 was good. Uh, but once you start getting the 21 and 25, you have to think of value versus the taste factor. Uh, hopefully these single cash editions have some, uh, special deal that we you know we just don't know about and and hopefully once i get some comments uh generated maybe they'll be somebody they'll be like yeah oh yeah i've had a couple of these and they were you know really good or they were you know so 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 21 was the gateway scotch that's awesome the founders of the Canadian club of scotch yeah 25 uh, seems too expensive given reviews. It sounds like it should be if given a 2250 to 300. I, I'd say 300, 350 maybe, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm talking about the um, uh, Glenlivet as a whole. Uh, every, uh, and I'm glad you stopped by ET. Every, every Tuesday, I'll go, I'll pick a distillery and I'll just go in hardcore and review pretty much every aspect that I can about it to a point, uh, including your all's uh, input. So one to 10, thinking about all the bottles we talked about, guys, all your experience, what would you give uh, Glenlivet one to 10 for taste? Now I do have a soft spot with them because they are part of my initial journey. I love the 12, even though it's, I know it's not the most complex thing ever. It's just a really good solid daily sipper that is inexpensive and, and easily acceptable. DHS is, uh, is uh, definitely going to make them feel the pain. <laughs> he thinks they're under average. Uh, Dram, he also used to have guests, but he's too cool for that now. No, I still have guests. Uh, I, I, I just, it's it's just tough because unless someone writes to me and says, "Hey, you know what distillery are you doing?" and I say Glenlivet, they say, "Well, oh sure, I'll come on and, and do it." Then it's kind of like, you know, it's it's tough to organize. But I'd be, I'd be happy to throw anybody an invite that wants to come and talk on in real time. If if you do, uh, let me know uh, in the chat, and I'll send you an invite right now if you want to join. I don't care. <laughs> It's uh, part of the fun. Uh, six from Samuel. Five uh, DHS thinks is uh, he's still he's sticking to his four because he thinks they're a little bit under. I think I'm hanging with with Sam at least on this one at a minimum. I, I would I'm I was leaning towards a six, but I am going to take the four from DHS into account. Um, okay, Dram, if you uh, since you're already sipping, let's let's do it. Let me uh, send you a quick invite. Let's see here. Now, if I remember correctly, Dram, you, and I appreciate your all's patience real fast while I send this. I think I've already got you in here. Come on, maybe. There you are. The Dram dude at Gmail. There we go. All right. So, link and link. Hopefully, this will work. I sent it from my hot, uh, my Outlook uh, account um, just because I already had it up. I probably should have sent it to you via the uh, Gmail link because um, it'd be faster. But just post in the chat. You can block anyone else joining. Uh, well, I already sent it, so he should have it just in, the, in, the, in a second. Let me bring up the uh, one second here. The... I lost my feed. Where'd it go? It's not good when you lose your feed. There it is. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, go ahead and join, uh, and and I'll try to keep an eye out for you, uh, Dram. When you uh, appear, the box appears. I've had to I have to kind of occasionally look to see if you're waiting up there. Uh, anyway, we are looking at. Um, Glen of his taste. Now, anybody else, uh, throw a number out there. Uh, E.T. says he has a nice store across the road. They have a, some signatory bottlings of Glen of it. I haven't gone, uh, got one, though. They seem to sit and gather dust. Yeah, the, the independent bottlings are the kind of, they're kind of like their own beast, E.T. I, 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 try, I tend not to, to take them into account when I'm looking at the distillery, only because the distillery doesn't really... Yes, they produce the cast that's out there, but they're not like 
doing anything else with it and they don't have any control of, of, of how that goes after the fact. So I'm like, eh, you know, I don't know if it's, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I send it, Dram. So, so go ahead and click on it. I, I don't. I definitely don't mind. Um, DHS is better. The twelves on the shelf. The twelve first fill is below average. The fifteen is below average for a fifteen. The eighteen is closer to average. The twenty one's below average. The Duras respect the ABV. Yeah. Samuel's asked me if I'd enjoy Bomar. I've been enjoying the Bomar eighteen of late. Uh, maybe tonight. Ah. Uh, Bomar is a tough one for me only because I personally like a thicker, oilier mouth coat. Now, if you're a big fan of the Glengoin, or if you like um, I'm trying to think of some other more thin to the uh, mouth coat whiskeys, uh, but Glengoin has great flavor. And I do like the Bomar uh, Tindorus More 3. That is. I've had my own bottle of and loved it, also known as the Tempest 6 over in Europe, if you're watching from there. Um, but um, the, the the 18 is a nice flavor. It just doesn't have the mouth coat that I personally subjectively like. I'm not saying it's a bad scotch per se at all, uh, because I know plenty of people that enjoy it, and it, it's, it does have quality flavor. It's just the more – I, I definitely if, – if someone's a Glen Goyne fan, then I'm all about letting them know about trying certain – Certain Bowmores do better than others, of course, but um, Devil's Cast is another one I've heard really good things about. I haven't personally had it, but I've heard it's a, a good one to, to look for. But these are pricey uh, ventures. You know, the Doris is, it, I think, was like one, was it one like 170? Wasn't it kind of up there? I, I'm trying to remember what the final price for that was. Let me see if I, I might be way, way high, uh, 130 maybe. Let me go back and see what the uh sorry to get off on a tangent someone asked me about bomar so i just want to answer them as quickly as i can 130 yeah sorry about that 130 so i'm gonna look out for the devil's cast yeah if you can find that i think it's worth a, a venture you know if you're gonna do a bomar and if you're looking to own like a decent bomar without going to the thousand dollar range I think it's a it's a good thing. Hey Trooper, good to see you, man. I really appreciate you stopping by. Uh Peter still said one bottle left of the the Bomar fifteen light. Oh and a Kevel's cast three. The uh these bottles were around hundred dollars wow, a hundred dollars Canadian all for the Devil's Cast three. I thought that one was extremely was I thought that was one of the higher ones. Let's see what they're selling it for in Maryland. One second. Uh Bomore. I thought they had the Devils up there still. They might have sold it. And they, I could have sworn they were asking for 200 and something in minimum, but it has been a while, so I better not put that in stone. But I thought it was one of the higher ones. I, I, could, be, I could be mistaken, though, by that. So I, well, it's 110 around here just sold out. Huh. Well, well, damn, I guess it was uh, a lot lower than I expected. Maybe it was a specialized version of... Uh, I have seen some of their stuff where you think it's going to be one price and it ends up being something different. Yeah, it was probably a secondary price because uh, I have yet to see that just sitting there in the store. It's probably one of those things like um, with certain releases where unless you jump on it really quickly... Um, Kind of like Art Big's uh, committee releases, they do a release once a year, and if you don't jump on it in the first like month that it's released and it's gone, instead of paying the hundred to hundred ten dollars that it, it usually costs and is definitely worth, you'll be one of those that's shelling out two to three hundred dollars for it if you really like it. Um, and I would pay that maybe for the Dark Cove uh, committee release. It's every bit worth two or three hundred, I think. The other ones maybe not so much. Uh, but that's a debatable thing too. Uh, yeah, the 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 lame, the lame rig uh, was never available in the U.S. You're right about that because when you said 15, the only one that's readily available is the darkest, which is a completely different uh, offering. So, 
I like to get my hands on more of their travel retail exclusive stuff. I have had the Golden Reef, which I like, the Gold Reef. And um, it was good enough for me to think, yeah, I would definitely try another one uh, and see how it goes. It's only 95 there. Well, the Batch 3 doors more here, I've never seen less than like 120, 130. So I think that's one of those uh, uh, specialized uh, Ohio slash Kentucky prices you got there at DHS. You're just damn lucky. Their, their prices are so low in certain distilleries there. It's crazy. Anyway, so anybody else besides uh, I got a 6 and a 4, averages out to a 5. I'm not going to dispute it, but anybody else want to throw a number – yeah, two eleven seventy nine is what I thought it was going to be. Um, is a five fair? I mean, it, I just think they're above average, though. That's the that's what's pain is. It's killing me not to give them a six. It's really killing me. Don't you think overall, if you look at the whole the whole distillery from a one to a ten, five being the average. Don't you think they're at least a six, for God's sakes? I mean, so who's worse than Glenlivet? I could think of a boatload of distilleries. Let's just run through them real fast. This is a, a good exercise. Now, if, if I don't, I'm not looking at a complete list here. If, if I don't know the name, uh, it's most likely because it's brand new or not even opened yet. Elberfeldy. There's one right there. I, I, I am not a huge fan of Elber, Elberfeldy's uh, whiskey. Just 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 the way I roll. Avendurg. Worst whiskey I've ever had was an Avendurg. Well, there's two, and I haven't even got out of the ABs yet. Um, let's see. I'm going to go give you some more. The Aaron was, was I don't know. i got to try more Aaron's before I make a statement on that. I do like Akintoshin, so I'm not going to throw them under the bus. Othrosk uh, was decent. Altmore was decent. Bob Blair I like. The Blalin, Dolik, uh, Belmanic, Balvini is good. Ben Nevis is good. Ben Ryanick is good. Ben Rennes is decent. Ben Romick is good. Bladnock is great. Blarathol is pretty good. Bowmore is one that I just just – I don't, I just, the mouth coat just kills me. I just, it's just not my kind of thing, but, you know. Um, you put them on par with Elberfeldy. Are you crazy? <laughs> uh, Royal Brockla. I mean, there's another one I, I'm kind of like, uh, um, Cardu. I mean, Cardu, definitely. Jura. I mean, DHS is, that. that's definitely, I mean, dude, I could go on and on, and I haven't even got, I, I, I didn't even really go – I don't want to butcher all these people, but, man, there are a lot, 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 lot worse. <laughs> the Strathisla stuff was, was – I have I still have a bottle that I had from three years ago. I can't get through that stuff. It's so bad. So, Dalmany, I, I see uh, that's one that I would debate. I think they're about maybe the same. Yeah, they're small, but they're still kind of, you know, like open. Open, I'm, I'm not a huge big fan of the profile because it's a, a lot more floral. And that's, you know, I'm not a fan of the ultra floral risky. So it's kind of like I could throw them in there. I could throw uh, Tom Navulin. Uh, Tomatin is one of those that's that's hit or miss with me. Um Tuller Bedeen, hit or miss, really. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't. I think they're not as good as as Glenlivet's uh, overall taste. I'm just being honest with you. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a six. I know it's 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 crazy to you guys. Uh, some of you, some of you, I think agree with me. Uh, it might be complex, but it's it's if it's a bunch of complex stuff that you don't like, then it doesn't really make it any better. It's a it's a the complexity thing is kind of like yeah you're sounding like a five to me <laughs> yeah I guess you're right I, I'll throw them in the at you're right for the, they are one of the bigger distilleries 
you you should be on the debate team DHS. They are one they are one of the bigger distilleries. If they want to hang with the big boys, they should be able to have a a, a better than average taste. I still have a soft spot for them for God's sakes, but I'll I'll stay true to the format. I know, and I, I'm, 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 I am going past my own biases as hard as it is, man. Because, because I, I do, I do love a classic Levit Twelve. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what I got to do? I've got to turn my, uh, my sound on because I turned it off because I was hearing myself. So let me turn this um, and turn the player on the thing down. Hey, Dram, how you doing, man? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, sound good, look good. Appreciate you stopping by. That's, that's very nice of you to, to, you know, pop open that in the door. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, it's a shame I haven't seen that. Um, was it hard to find for you or was it an easy find? No, so I actually bought this a couple of years ago when my wife and I were in Tahoe, I found oh, wow. some small store there, I think. And I decided to get it. Was this Lake Tahoe? Yeah. Is that, and that's in uh, Nevada? Uh, it's the yeah, border of California. Nevada. Yeah. Okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, cool. I haven't been there myself, but my wife has family that actually lives out there. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. The, uh, so you think five's pretty fair? You think it's pretty average uh, for? I guess what what brought me down was the big boy distillery. You know, they are bigger than a lot of the ones that I might not like as much. Yeah. So it's kind of like I do like them better than Glenfiddich. I mean, it's kind of one of those subjective things because they're kind of in the same caliber range. But uh, I don't know. It's kind of it's a it's a it's a tough one. But I guess taking into account all their stuff. It is a pretty much a, a decent average taste, and uh, the ones that we've rated higher, like Holland Park, is a solid eight. I could see why you know you got to rate it that way. Oh, yep, I see a ball blair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got a ball blair back there on the shelf. I've got five of them. Oh my god, man! <laughs> are they the 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 uh, the ones that are year statements, the vintage ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys don't haven't had the uh, the new 12, 15, 18 of the ball blurs yet either, have you? No. no. I guess the Tybeth guys are probably going to wait till January to do the release, it sounds like, from what uh, Mike was saying. Huh. <clears throat> Good to see you. Uh, I thought uh, I'm glad you stuck around, Mike, because I thought he said he had to go. <laughs> the um, consistency, I, I have to give him a, a pretty decent score, I would think, for consistency, because I've never like had a 12, 15, etc., and got something I, I wasn't expecting, you know, time and time again. Batches are always different, but the 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 core seems to always be a, at a certain level. Would you say so? I'm not, I know you're not a huge drinker of it anymore. Uh, maybe some of the guys in the chat can say, "Hey, you know, I've I've uh, always had a decent time with, even though it's not my favorite." Hopefully, they can say, "Well, the twelve, the fifteen, or the eighteen is always at least the same." Yeah. There's also a seventeen-year <laughs> travel bottle. I guess he's talking about a travel retail exclusive type thing. Yeah, they. It is interesting. Maybe you know the answer to this, Dream. Is there a reason why some of these distilleries, like um, like Bowmore, is a good example that we were talking about? Um, Glenlivet doesn't really have a huge uh, profile, but Balvenie does a, a lot of travel retail exclusive releases, um, and Holland Park has gotten into it too. Why, why do some of them do a lot of releases like that? And some of them. You'd never see anything from, do you know? It's a good question. I don't know. I feel like the more popular distilleries that most people have heard of, even if they're not big whiskey drinkers, I think those guys probably do a lot more travel retail stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't know what the 
point of it is, really. Yeah, the only thing I could think of is I was thinking, I'm like, okay, the ones that do do it, what's the the reasoning? And the only reason I could I could think of, well, there was two different reasons. One of them, which I think Lefroy does with their Four Oak and their 1815, is they have some stuff that's lying around and they're not really quite sure what to do with it. And they're like, well, we, we let's find a way to make this work for a release and get it out in the system. And then I think on the second reason, I think a better reason is, is to do experiments <laughs> to see, you know, with uh, port casks or, or different like uh, charring things and whatnot. I think some of them do it for experimental releases, maybe. That's just, this is a guess, though. <laughs> Hopefully, somebody that knows the the industry will will say maybe releases that they don't quite have enough to do like a more of a worldwide release. I don't know. Limited, uh, yeah, limited uh, juice. And the reason I picked the Four Oak and the eighteen fifteen <clears throat> is because it's one of those. Those are the two minus like the PX cast, the QA cast. The Uncle Moore, those guys are really good travel retail exclusive ones, but the ones like the Four Oak and the AT15, I'm just kind of like, what was the purpose for that? Because <laughs> it's that like low caliber compared to their the rest of their entire line. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I don't know. ET says that a lot of, I'm sorry, DHS says I want to crap with them for dropping the 16 Endura to NAS, yes, but yeah, they are consistent as you can get. No, that's why I, I, I took account of, you know, of uh, what you guys say, because uh, that was a, a huge surprise that they had a 16-year-old version of this that I tasted, and all the reasons that I'm I'm not really giving it more than a B- minus is because of the age and the limitations that with, with with just having you know and it's obvious this is young young whiskey there's not really any older juice i don't think if there is it's very little in there you know et says yeah. a lot of restaurants have the 12 and anytime i've ordered it, it's always been very consistent yeah i, I think those bigger guys probably have it easier on consistency so yeah, that's that's the that's the tough thing. When after after I started doing these uh, types of reviews for the distilleries, and I got this was going to be number eleven, I'm thinking, yeah, it's going to be really tough once I get through the big boys of of how these guys are going to to fare. But I was hoping that it would be balanced with some of their other things like value and craft things that they can compete, you know, with yeah. because they're not, you know, massive, but it, it it yeah it's it is getting harder to, to think of how this is going to work with when you get to the uh, the smaller ones like the ones I was mentioning earlier when we were looking for the ones that were not as uh, up to snuff but when you yeah, make millions of guys, you know the the size of their batches are huge compared to others right so yeah Silva's saying right there. I guess it's yeah same thing with the this spring bank was was does uh, it's so hard for them to be consistent because they're really doing a, a true craft and it's different every year every time that they they touch uh, even the, like their green uh, organic stuff for example and when they put out one year um, fifteen in one year is not the same as the fifteen the next year and that kind of stuff so I guess I might have to find a different way to. I might have to simplify, I guess, the, the the series. I was trying to think of, of where to go, and I was thinking about – I think doing the short like videos on the side would be kind of cool to do, but long form, I might have to uh, go back to like just toning in on, on a, a dram or two and, and just focusing on that because it is, it's is—it's going to be tougher the more I do this with the uh, for the scorings to make sense and, and all that. Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, you do you do what you can. I mean, with everything, scoring is always going to be subjective. No matter yeah. how objective you try to be. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the reason why I thought. Well, I'll try to do it kind of like more like a Metacritic kind of type of system, where um, there's more input on on different yeah. sides from different areas. But like you said, still. 
it still is a, a pain to deal with. Maybe I'll simplify it even more and just and just instead of even doing scoring and all that kind of crap, just going through notes and, and aspects of things that, you know, are pleasing and things that are just there and things that, that I might not like someone else might like and just leaving it leaving it up to the the viewer. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I guess I'm just trying to think of it, and, and it, you guys are the best ones to really ask of what's the, the best direction to go in, so Spring Bank Effect Louis doesn't even have a core, everything is a limited edition, yeah. Well, I mean, at least they consistently pick a year and stick with, like, the 10s, always going to be there. Hopefully their 12th cast strength will, will stick it out in their 15, 21, 25. I mean, I don't think they've ever stopped making those years, have they, Dram, that you know of? No, I don't think so. But he's right. I mean, they, they do change every the 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 make and the spirits different every time. The way they craft it. So, <clears throat> just finished my 2016 Spring Bank 12 year cast drink last week. I think it's really good. Is you, do you are you a big fan of the cast strength uh, Spring Bank 12 dram? Yeah, no, it's really good. Especially for the price. I mean, I don't know what it is in California. Here it's like one to one ten at the top, I think. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. It's even better in California then. I think it's like one ten to one hundred, one ten, so uh typically. But DHS uh I think uh, sorry, I just want to catch up. I still have to have a cheap pour sometimes when I want to be on a whiskey. Yeah, he likes the Peter likes the ten above the the glen of the twelve. Yeah, I, I, for yeah. quality craft whiskey, I, I agree, Peter. I do like the the Spring Bank ten over the glen of the twelve. Uh, even though it's younger, it's it's a better overall whiskey, I think. And yeah, and Gage told us that it Spring Bank ten is a lot more expensive. <laughs> Probably like double the price. Yeah, like seven. It's hard to find it for under seventy bucks here in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Same in there in California. Yeah, it's over seventy. Spring Bank, twelve cast strength there is one thirty-seven. Jeez, man. Oh, that's that's harsh. <laughs> you know what? I think I might. I think you brought up a good a good point, um, guys. It, it with this system that I'm doing, I'm not even sure if it if it works out well this way. I might just. Uh, have to uh, reevaluate the way I'm doing some of these uh, the scorings and and whatnot. So I'm gonna I'm, I just need to get something else to, to drink here. What do you recommend, Dram? If anything, what do you think? Uh, I think what you're you're doing right now could work. I I would say use more of the scale, of one to ten. What, what? Less six and sevens, and you know if it's not that great you know don't give it a five or a six give it a two or a three wow okay I know. well the, the, the ones I, as much as you can and then it'll, when we get there it's going to get pretty harsh the only reason why these first ones are like a minuses and b pluses across the border because they're the ones i i knew like i did my homework from the beginning and i'm like well if this is what i like i know i should start with these you know 15 20 distilleries and um i think that's why a lot of them are are are, are pretty high averages because they really truly are pretty damn good comparatively to yeah. the others but yeah, when we do like one like Loke lomond it's going to be interesting because i personally I'm, i would give low scores just because it's just not my my thing but it's going to be interesting to see what you guys think kind of collectively if it's going to be if it's going to remain low like i feel like or if it's going to be kind of drug someone in another direction i guess it'll be still be a good experiment to go through i guess we'll still do it um consistency wise i'm leaning towards a higher number like a seven or an eight only because they are like you said though that they are huge in mass quantities but um I think, do you think it's a 7.5 out of the question on consistency? No. I mean, and feel free to chime in on the, on the chat too, guys, what you think on consistency. Can't really ding them. So. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <coughs> with those mass quantities, it's, it's really, it's really tough. 
the new 12 is 43.2 percent it's a nine on at least consistency wow okay so he's definitely going to bring them up with that I'm trying to think if if um if I want to debate that or not, but they are so big and, and can do such things where it's almost hard for them to miss out on consistency because of, of their size. <laughs> Variety is something. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, man. Go ahead. I said DH still says nine. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking. I'm. I'm leaning towards that. It's. Um, it, it, like you said, it's hard to really ding them on anything. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure there's been some mild issues where you can't really give them a 10, but they're not dropping their quality like some cough, McKellen cough. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I will say that, they, that you never uh, really see a difference, even if you love them or hate them, when you get – Three years ago, the Glenlivet 12 tastes just like the Glenlivet 12 of today, pretty much. Um, so they should shine with that. So I think I'll leave them a nine. Unless anyone's got like a, a, a big reason to not to. I've had an inconsistent bottling. Let me know. Variety is uh, is a tough one. They do have the Nadura City series with the uh, higher end cast strength stuff. They do have a really, really huge core line now, especially with that, that you know, the fort, the new fourteen. Uh, it's like a cognac uh, cask collection. I haven't tried that one. Um, they even have a fifty, which is crazy. I'm sure the price point on that is going to be a little up there. <laughs> the, uh, but looking at the, just uh, their basic uh, hmm. offerings, they do have a, a decent selection when it comes to that. With that, the private casks make it a. Uh, interesting too it's kind of reminiscent of the glamorangi I, I think without they don't really have the private releases though like they do on a yearly basis are there any re yearly re releases that glenlivet does that you are aware of i don't think they do any yearly ones no i don't think so so they might have to get dinged on the um, variety only because of of that type of uh option yeah i'm looking through like some uh some other ones they do have the occasional like high-end like captain uh i want to say uh captain but the uh the um single cast single cast edition stuff so I, it's that's there but without that i think i'm gonna have to give them something a little lower than glamour and cheese because they do have the uh, private releases what do you think about that uh the palette on that one that you're drinking uh i like it after I mean, they got through the vanilla and the florals did anything else come about that, that that crept in there um pretty oaky too a lot of honey but That's it's good it's, it's a little overly floral for me but i i could probably put some water in it but i didn't do that and i'm about out so oh okay yeah, the uh, um, it's you know 16 years old. I probably paid 60 bucks for it. So the florals always kind of throw me off when it comes to yeah. the uh, like the open. That's the only reason I'm not a huge open fan. They do have some good complex stuff. I'm not saying that they don't, but just the the profile for me is is definitely heavier on the floral end. So I'm kind of like it's hard for me to get jazzed about drinking that, you know. But. Yeah. Friday, I gave Glamorgy a 7.5. So I think it'd be close to that, but not as good. I think I'm leaning towards a 7 for the fact that they don't have the, maybe even a 6.5, because they don't have the, uh, a Carriages type release or a, or like the Alta, uh, Bacalta, that kind of thing, Alanta, and all that. Um, they do have the Cypher Alpha, yeah. those series. Those are those every year. I think they are actually more of a newer series, so I think it'll, that'll that'll bring them back up a little bit. Now that I'm talking myself a little bit into it, because I do have the Alpha Cipher Code Enigma, and I think they've been doing that for about four years now. The Code was a f crazy one. I when I I, I think you 
talked about not being a big fan of it either. Um, that was weird. When I tried it, it, when I went in initially, I was like, whoa, this is like everywhere. It was, it was a very schizophrenic type of, I don't I shouldn't use that term. It was a very, uh, yeah. it was a very, uh, I agree. Yeah, it was confusing. Yeah. Disjointed. I don't want to say mess. Cause I did enjoy aspects of it after two things. The first thing I had to do was I had to let it sit out for quite a while. I noticed, and I don't think it was due to age. I think it was just, I don't know. Oxidation was needed. And I had to add, a, a, I don't want to say a significant amount of water because I never really add a ton of water to anything, but more than a couple of drops. Once I did the water and the time, though, I think it did help it a lot, if that makes any difference. But um, but for variety, I think they're on par with uh, Glamorangy on that. Um, age statements. They do have a, a shitload of age statements, I have to say. I can't really think of anything they're lacking in. They've got a 12, 14, 15, 18, uh, 21. I think they've got... Do they have anything in between the 21 and the... I'm sorry, 25 and a 50? That's where they might have to... I don't think so. But yeah. the age self has a good point. They have the Nadura range, so all this cast strength stuff that Glenn Morangy doesn't have. That's true. That is true. I didn't think about that. I'm glad he brought that up. So that would be a little bit of an edge, maybe even with uh, the cast strength. I'll give him an eight on the variety, then I think on that one. Eight statements, though. Uh, I think that uh, they've got a pretty damn good. It's hard to knock them off of a nine, other than the fact that they have a gap between twenty-five and fifty. Where, not to say there's a lot of you know a boatload of people that can afford thirty to fifty-year-old whiskey, but there are people that can. And if you don't have that option, because all their single cast editions I'm seeing are like fourteen or sixteen, seventeen year. They don't really have um, a twenty-five to fifty. They need to have at least you would think one thirty to forty ish option for people that can have, that can go to that range, but that's really hard to really knock them for anything major. So I think I'm going to stick with a uh, with an eight really on uh, age statements because that's the only thing I can think of that they're really missing. Looks like um, I feel like they're missing sherry bombs and a lot of. Uh, when he says W O M E cast, I think is he saying wor Wom wor home? What's the word I'm looking for there, Dram? <laughs> it's not women casks. <laughs> Wine. Wine. There we go. <laughs> I I found every word but the one that he was trying to fit in here. <laughs> and no cast strings for anything else, yeah. Well, they they're they're they do have the um, like I said those. Uh, let's see, yeah, those single casks additions are cast strength, so they do have that. Um, so I think we'll stick with with uh, with that. I don't think there's a, an issue with age statement available. Uh, a statements availability is really damn good too. And anytime I go to a bar, it seems like they have the 15 or the 12. Um, and likewise, at, at, at pretty much every, um, every store you, you venture into, they at least have a few, um, I'd say three on availability. Um, so it's really hard to knock them on that one as well trying to think of they don't really have any I'm trying to remember i've had a lot of the one the i want to say high-end stuff because it's not high-end but the the more cask options i've had tend to be more glenmorangie esque than the glenlivets you don't really when you go into a bar and you unless you go to specifically like a nice whiskey uh specialized scotch type bar you're not going to usually see anything outside of the 12 or 15 you're not gonna be a, 
but even at some of the specialty ones, I, I, I don't really see a lot of the higher Glenlivet um, options. So maybe knock them a little bit on that. <clears throat> Thinking maybe an eight on availability. Because that's the only thing that I think they're lacking when you go. How about DHS and uh, Lost Cause Trooper? When you go, when you're offshore, do you have any issues finding Glenlivet uh, as an option? Not to say you're going to buy it, but any uh, issues finding it? Uh oh, Dram just took off. <laughs> I honestly, all your bobblers, all your bobbler belongs to me. <laughs> Oh, man, what are you digging out there? Oh, look at all those Blenromics. Jeez, man. <laughs> You've got good taste, I can tell. <laughs> uh, I see some Balvenies. I see some Glamorin juice back there. I see some. I think I see a couple of Macallans, too. Yeah. Oosa Spring makes at the top. Is that a Burgundy cask I see up there? <laughs> there you go. Is that a burgundy? Uh, you've got a burgundy, don't you? You bastard. Oh, it's sherry. Oh, in the burgundy. Damn. So you've got a burgundy, a sherry. What are those two in the middle? Uh, 12 year old cash strength. It's an older one. Uh huh. And then this is a 16 year old cash strength, uh, which is Amontillado matured. Oh, dude. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean to bust your I don't mean to bust your speakers, but did you <laughs> say did you say uh what was the year on that one? Sixteen. A sixteen and an Amatiado cast? Yeah. Oh man. Is that opened? <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh man. Uh I gotta try that somehow, someday, some way. <laughs> I might have to take a flight out to California. <laughs> Oh, there's the 16. Oh, man. Ah, that's a pretty one, too. Yeah, you're, running, you're running out of room on your spring bank shelf, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Nice greens. Yeah, I like, I like the green series. It took me a while to warm up to the green. But, uh, oh, and the reds, too. Wow. Definitely a nice collection there, Dream, I have to say. Oh, you got your hands on the new 16 Lefroy, I see. Yeah. <laughs> So what did you think about that? I'm just curious. I, I just got it the other day, so I haven't opened it. Oh, I haven't opened it. Gotcha. Yeah, let me know uh, later on uh, just what you what you thought. It, at, at first, if you're used to drinking, like like if you drink the the Carriages Triple Wig Cast drink that you got sitting next to it, I think you're going to like that one better only for a bit because the taste of that carriage is uh, triple with so good. Once you go back to the 16 though, just keep in mind, it's, it's the age and the refinement of it. It's, it is complex. It's different though. It's not like a, it's nothing like the Lefroig 15. If you've had that or any other Lefroig that I've ever had, it's a little more savory. It kind of reminds me of a nice, um, has some nice like sourdough, um, Kind of like a more a good mort log, not a bad one, but a good mort log. If you've ever had one of those, I think yeah. it kind of goes into that kind of sphere. If if you know what I mean. Some mort logs. We all want to drink at your bar there, Dram. It uh, <laughs> Trooper says. <laughs> DHS too. Sounds like we need to have a fill trip, kids. <laughs> Could you imagine just a bunch of people showing up at your house, being like, "Hey, hey, Dram, we're here for the for the spread." <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how fast your collection would just just be depleted? It'd be insane. Oh, I'm gonna live it. Distilled 2007, 62.9. Wow, that's a damn. Have you opened up that one yet? No, that's a sealed one there. Yeah, no, it's, it's also one of the ones I just bought. I just bought like seven bottles over the weekend. So. Oh, nice, man. That's a, if it, yeah, if I'm going to go with a, a independent bottling, the signatory releases are so damn good. And old particulars are good too. Yeah. A bunch of these. Now I know which just the uh, independents I need to collect. <laughs> Cause I, I've had some, some uh, really iffy ones, man, but thankfully the old particulars, you have a good point with those and the signatories are always pretty uh, solid. Have you done any black adders before? Um, I've had a couple. 
a friend told me that they're pretty usually pretty damn good. I just never went out and shelled out any money for them. Did you have any remorse for those, or uh, were you happy no, with them? They've all been pretty solid. I've had a couple that I've almost bought, and then either they were gone by the time I went to go buy them, or I just haven't pulled the trigger because they're they're some of them can be pricey, or at least yeah. <laughs> Now I hear you there. It's a definite value. Now this is an interesting thing because value is the tough thing. If you guys were um, watching the log of one show and in a good way, I think we, we found the fact that prices are just are for certain distillers, not all of them. Some of them are, are uh, decently consistent, but certain distilleries, man, could be all over the place from one state, even to another in the same region. It's crazy. Um, here, just talking about prices, you tell me, you guys tell me how far or close I am. Uh, the 12, uh, standard is, uh, 43. We'll say, uh, the new 14 is 50. The 15 is 60. The 18 is 115. The uh, 21 is 240 and the 25 is 400. Code and enigmas, those types are 115. Um, and the uh, Naduras fluctuate between 85 to 100. Uh, that's how it is pretty much here in Maryland. Now, value wise, what do you think? Uh, oh, sorry, AT, let me show your, I'll show your, show your, uh, statement there it filtered it out probably because you had the word black in it or something um what do you think about value wise when you go out and shell out some money for a glenlivet and um i know that the the once you get beyond the 18s the return on value might be a little iffy to some of you guys uh personally um i think the core up to the 18 solid on value but the high end stuff, yeah. Are you how are you uh, liking that? Yeah, it's fine. Not something that I mean, I mean comparatively to um, let me ask you this and, and feel free to, to say however you feel, don't feel like you have to appease anybody, but if you put that Glen Liv at eighteen, which was I'm assuming in California is probably not far off. Do you remember if it was um, more than about one fifteen there? Uh, it was less. Or less than it was less. Okay. So let's say a hundred bucks, right? For that for that Glenlivet eighteen. Comparatively to a Dalmore eighteen. Price is double. So taste wise and value, does that affect your bang for your buck when you're putting it up against something that's double the price? Is it double the quality? to make you feel like that your $200 is well spent, or do you feel like the hundred dollars is a better buy? I mean, if you're comparing it to Dalmar, then. Well, not just, let's, not, let's, not pick, let's not pick on anybody in particular. Let's also throw in like some other 18s that are, that are uh, higher priced, but I'm not sure if they're double quality, like the Glendronic yeah. 18. Yeah. I don't think anything scaled like that. So what do you what do you think as far as a value bottle right? doesn't necessarily taste twice as good as a one hundred dollar bottle? Right. Oh well, no, we got Swami in the house. <laughs> Sorry, he he distracted me with his comments. <laughs> the uh, no, but I mean, like, I mean, I'm I'm just talking about the the which, the bang for your buck with with the. Uh, what you get from an 18 year old Glen Livet versus an 18 year old from another distillery for the hundred and or so dollars. Do you feel like you're getting a good return for it? Depends on the other distillery, but I, I mean, just Glen Livet by itself, the 18 it's fine. It's relatively cheap for an 18 year old compared to others. Right. But oh, big time. Yeah. I buy it again. Probably not anytime soon. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's tough because. Not necessarily because there's another 18 year at a similar price. There's just something else at a similar price that I'd rather have. Yeah. Whether it's 18 years old or not, right? 
To me, Glenn Levitt is it's a tough one to take a look at, and, and because it, it's to me, it's a great starting Scotch distillery. Yeah. Is it you know as good as some of the other ones as far as like uh, you know another person's eight, another distillery's eighteen? No, but it, like you said, it's all also twice the cost. So you know, it's 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 not supposed to be, but for what they they put out, it seems like it's a decent value, but. You're never going to get a re good return on scotch for an actual drinker. <laughs> I'm not sure why you say that, Swami, because even though I have shelled out, like, a good example, a really good example, I just was reading an old review I did for the Spring Bank 19 port cast. Uh, it was a special one, uh, one out of 252 bottles. I think I, uh, it was one of the most expensive scotches that I personally shelled out money for around it was leaning towards the three plus range. And I still thought that it was a damn good return for what I was spending because even though it was really expensive, it's a 19 year, extremely well crafted, perfect notes, extremely complex. I'll never be able to get it again. You know, how could you really, you know, feel like it's not worth it? I, I think it is a good return, and I, when I say good return, I don't mean monetary return. I'm I'm talking like enjoyment equated to money return. That's what I'm I'm that's what I'm looking for for value. I'm not looking for a uh, for value as far as I bought this for eighty dollars. I'm gonna turn around and sell it for one twenty. That's definitely not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I shelled out to. I mean, here at Glendronic twenty one is like two hundred eighty dollars. It's crazy money. The, the the 18 is even like 212 I think or some crazy 180 or, or some crazy price but you know sometimes it might be I might feel like it's worth it sometimes not maybe not so much but you know it, but if it's a good distillery in, in a decent consistent bottle that I know is going to be good when I open it then I don't feel bad about spending that money I guess what I'm asking Dram is is basically do you when you spent that hundred dollars on that one of 18 do you feel like you got enjoyment return for that hundred dollars yeah but it's it's close i mean Very, kind of a borderline i bought it which was years ago now um at that point it, i definitely thought it was great but it's changed so i now, think the that's why i'm saying i wouldn't buy it again Right. Well, also, I think that you as a person, it's different. Like, like three years ago, when I started in the, down the journey, I think that I would have appreciated it more than if I opened it up right now. So my return three years ago is going to be different than my return on my money now. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those really hard to gauge things. But I guess I have to look at it as more of like a present day value type of thing. DHS wants all the spring bank. Better question is comparing the 18 to other bourbon only bottles. Well, yeah, but I, I don't think it's a comparison per se with value. I think it's, it's, it's just a basically you take X amount of money to spend on the Glenlivet 12, which is $45. Do you think that your money of $45 was, was well spent that you got $45 worth of enjoyment out of that, that whiskey? I could definitely say yes all day long for the 12. When you get to the 15, I'm still with it. Once you get past the 18 though, that's when I kind of have to say maybe not so much. And I'm trying to think of how to equate that into a, like a scale how would you scale such a thing because the the 12 to the 18 is definitely above average but the 18 to the so i guess it might be around an average value hmm let me see what that looks like on paper it's not it's not it's not terrible so i think we'll stick with a five what do you guys think about value uh, on the return of of your investment who do you think makes money on more on money off scotch the scotch drinker or i'm sorry industry or ikea from whiskey collectors well i don't buy these at ikea so. <laughs> i wish i could just go down it's, to it's ikea walmart walmart so Oh man, I wish you just waltz in the. Could you imagine if you could just waltz in the IKEA and just buy 
like some crazy, you know, uh, Bunahaven, uh, Polo <laughs> Cortado, you know, specialized 20 year cask, just waltz in and buy it for a hundred bucks. There you go. <laughs> be insane. <laughs> uh, well, if you hate Sherry McKellen, 18 could be unicorn tears. If you, if you'd not like it, similarly, if you're not a bourbon cask guy, well, it's not for you. Well, I'm not saying that what you're buying DHS is, is, is for you or not for you. I'm thinking of it like this. I know, I already know I like something from Glenlivet and let's just take the 12 as a good example or the 15 or whatever it is. And I go and I spend the amount of money it costs to buy that bottle. Do I think the amount of money that I'm spending is, is worth what I'm getting? I already know I like it per se. I just, I'm just asking if you think that the value of what you have to give to get it is worth it or not personally on your, for you. What we got all of the 16. Yeah. Swami just mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> the Dura 16 was the only going to do if you don't agree with me. <laughs> well, I'm not going to debate you, Swami. I did already look at the uh, first fill, uh, which is not the 16 year old. And I will agree that it, I think it was a little bit above what I would consider average for a, a, any kind of dram, but I only gave it a B minus. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like a blew me away or, or even remotely what I would consider a good, you know, offering. I, I would lean definitely more towards the 16. Now, D just talked about the P did like, I am a huge P fan, but I, I didn't like the aggressive lemon meringue that I got off the, the Glenlivet P did Nadura. Have you ever had the P did Nadura dram? No. You see, I, I'm not saying it's a bad dram. Let me show his, uh, these guys are, are, are doing all these comments that I have to approve because they're borderline aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's funny. It's, it's, it's making me click show every or hide every time they, they say something. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. The P did, um, like, I'm not saying it's bad or good per se, cause that's subjective. But the, for my profile, it was the lemon was really in your face, like lemon ring pie, crazy i'm not showing that swami sorry <laughs> anyway but uh dhs uh likes the peated a lot so he says if you don't like the peated barrel you're an idiot and you smell like something's homeless man. i'm afraid of where they're going with this stuff oh it's super super fruity huh it's it's super super lemony though. I mean, if unless you're a huge huge fan of lemons, which I'm not, uh, that still gets masked there, Swami. Sorry, <laughs> Swami is testing my my chat filter. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, but um, yeah, anybody d disagree with five is an, it's an average value pretty much because of the. I think it's a great value for the bottom end, but a bad value for the top end i got a lot more than lemon yeah i mean i got some pears and some like um white grapes and some like other fruits but <laughs> yeah sorry they're they're closer to a six but man okay that's not out of the question you know if you think it's a little bit of value would you say uh uh dram I said, just give them a five. That's what I started with when I first uh, said something. Yeah, it's give it's, them a five and move on. Yeah. <laughs> now, craft. The craft is something I do try to look up and and get uh, some behind the scenes uh, stuff. There are they are such a big distillery. It's it's uh tough to get anything. Let me see. Let me do a quick. Uh, last uh, check on something just to make sure I didn't miss something. I believe there wasn't anything special about their stills or, or did anybody know anything? Do they do anything special with their stills or with the way they craft their whiskey? I know when their Nadura range is not chill filtered or colored, but I am suspicious of some of their 
early stuff. Let me see something. Let me minimize something here. Here we go. Go back to the little list here. As I'm assuming, and I know what assuming does, which is not always the best idea, but I'm pretty sure that they their core basic line, like the 1215 stuff, they do color uh, am i amidst for saying that uh if i am i um i'm pretty sure you're right off and the same with the uh, chill filtering because they their lower end stuff is 40 percent pretty much across the board it seems like 1843 43, yeah i was just looking at that one uh 25 is 43 and I'm suspicious. I don't have a bottle to look at, unfortunately, but I am thinking. One site I have noticed that they that's pretty good about telling you is the whiskey exchange people for coloring, at least. Sometimes they do chill filtering when you pick something. And I think it's because they're in Europe. They're a little bit more transparent because in Germany they have to tell you. But... uh if yeah, I, whiskey, whiskey exchange. I think just if it's on the bottle or not, because oh, they color for things that distilleries that don't color, even though they don't say anything about it. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, whiskey, whiskey exchange will still say they do. So, so even if if you're sure that the distillery doesn't do it, the exchange people might still say that they do. Yeah. Oh, that it's sucks. Okay, on the bottle, like. Like McAllen, or, you know. I got gotcha. you. I'm just trying to look. Sorry to be off camera here. I'm trying to look really close at this bottle of 15 to see if it if it states. And typically, if it doesn't tell you um, when it's a 40 43 percent bottle, if it doesn't say non chill filtered, mm -hmm. it typically is. Yeah. And that's definitely got to have at least a little color in it. I'm thinking to be just an all straightforward French oak. Uh, cask there's not anything um sherry related in that bottle so i don't see how it could be as dark as it is i could be off but i don't think so so they are going to suffer a little bit on the crafting side of things because of that do you and this is this is kind of a more of a scientific question for you, Dram. You might know or might not know, but do you know, like, if you took a look at, we'll we'll make it try to make it fair and look at the major distilleries. We'll we'll take we'll say the top uh, out of the. It looks like currently there are alive uh, 127 distilleries in Scotland. Uh, some of these are not active yet because they're they're building, but we'll say out of the active 120 ish, how many of those do you think? Uh, uh, the big boys will will say the top twenty color and chill filter their stuff. Do you think it happens more so than not, or do you think it's uh, fifty like a hat split average, or do you think it's more of them don't do it? Um, I know it's kind of. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I'm just. I'm yeah, just trying to think. I don't know if I can answer that. Just on a quick glance, and, and, and fortunately, and some of them, like like Ardbeg is one of those where I think they do it for some and don't do it for others, or don't. No, that actually, no, they don't color or chill filter. I don't think most of their stuff actually. They're not a good one to, to use as an example. I'm trying to think of one that is. Um, let's see, Glamorangi might be a good example of that glen scotia i think is where like some of their lower end stuff they'll will and some of their higher end stuff they definitely will not color and chill filter it but typically that's also the rise of the abv from 40 43 once you get four past 46 it's like well why bother but the coloring thing is is it seems like it's maybe half and half so i guess for an average 
it'd be pretty close to being average. <coughs> Diageo does both mini color, but the McKellen HP doesn't color. They will, but they will chill filter. It's one of those tough ones. Most of the big top distilleries do color though. Yeah. And it's for consistency. I don't think our big color is anything. And I, I, th I don't, I don't, I don't suspect Lafroy of doing that either, because uh, the d darker stuff tends to be the stuff that's sherry uh, related, like the lore, or um, the Uncle Moore was a little darker. Only I think because of the sherry. The other stuff is usually pretty bright looking, from what I remember. I've heard Lafroy does color some of their stuff, but okay, which is weird because they're in green bottles, so. <sighs> Yeah, that's that's another reason why I was I was thinking that they wouldn't bother, but um, I guess once you pour it, though, they want it to be maybe consistent on some some of their stuff. Like I wouldn't think the tin or the quarter cask would be colored at all, um, because there isn't really much color to it. The select I don't even think about really, but the triple wood might be one of those that they do color because it's it's not going to have that color without it and if you're looking for that woody I guess if you're thinking wood and you're tasting it you're wanting it to, to look a little darker for some reason maybe they might color something like that but uh, I just don't rem remember seeing any really uh, crazy coloring in their stuff outside of the sherry stuff the PX cask of course is going to have some color mid era things like that but the uh, I'm just thinking about the uh, Regular core stuff, but I think you're. I think you're right. Some of them, a uh, couple, couple select bottles, they might do some coloring on it. I guess it's it's a tough thing to really average out. They also might not do it just to make it look darker. They just do it to make it look the same color as it always is. DHS was asking about Bunahaven, and uh, they do not color typically. Like the twelves, natural colored, non chill filtered. That's one of those distilleries. Thankfully that across the board of every bottle that I have, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six Havens that are not like specialized or independents. They're just standard, either travel retail or uh, core releases. They're all natural colored, non-chill filtered. So they definitely uh, got a high mark for the craft. Um, they got an eight for craft. So, that's the reason why. For these guys, I'm definitely leaning towards either a five or a six, I think, at this point, because uh, the Nadura saves them a bit. That's why I'm thinking maybe a six or maybe a seven at the top end. But it's really hard to go above a, a, I think a six because uh, the Nadura se series is the only stuff that I see that is definitely not chill filtered or colored. Um, they do have some cast strength options, which helps them a little bit as well um, on the craft. They do have the uh, those going for them. I'm trying to see if um, I don't see anything else that's going to yeah, and, and it's funny because they're, they're such a big ball player that I'm surprised that they don't you know consistency for the taste is not a factor. Why would you be worried about consistency on the look? Is it really that hard to control the color of whiskey? I guess is the question. I guess if the, all these guys are doing it, maybe it is harder than it's realized to make it look consistently, you know, similar. Ooh, that's a tough one. You think six for craft is kind of fair on the, uh, Five. <laughs> Malta, uh, Swami thinks I'm a sellout that works for Glenlivet. I am not, man. Uh, I just, I just, only reason I have a soft spot for him is because of the whole starting off with the 12, 15, 18, that, that type of, uh, in, in the pineapple tropical notes. I, I just really like that, that aspect of, of their core. Now, what I had tonight was not, something that I would buy a bottle of and it was just the first Phil Nadura non A statement version. It was not up to snuff, but if I had a 16 year old version of that, I think I'd really like it. 
and it seemed like you uh, one out of ten, or, or would, I'm not sure how you like to rate your stuff if, if you like to do five stars or whatever. But how would you? What would you give that endure that you just tried? I'm just curious. Uh, he has a 16, so it's going to be a little higher, I think, than a lot of other things that they. Uh, well, I just opened it, so that might be a little unfair, but uh, yeah. give it a... For, we'll, we'll just call it first impressions. <laughs> yeah, uh, 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10, that's not bad. That's not, that's, I mean, it's better than, than average a little bit, so I mean, that's, that's not, it's not blowing your socks off, but it's it's solid. Um, what was? Do you remember the price point for that 16, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I think I paid like 60 bucks, and the one I know where... The Isn't that crazy for a 16-year-old whiskey? Still, so. Aren't you surprised for... I'm not saying that it's it, they should have charged you more. I'm as surprised for a 16-year-old stated whiskey that is that cheap. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that would happen today. I mean, the one I know where the other is is still $60, but it's like a hole in the wall liquor store. That's probably never updated the price. So yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, this one was bottled in 2014. So five years ago. This is going to end up being pretty much right at a at a I think a, it's a good solid B, which is which is what I expected. Um, nothing outrageous, but I think I mean let me ask you this, Dream, and I think I think you'll say yes. Do you think that if you had a friend that was a, a bourbon guy, but he was like, you know, I kind of I'm looking at trying Scotch. I just have I've never tried it before. I like bourbon. I like an occasional rye. What do you what are you gonna give me to start off with? I mean, wouldn't you consider the one of the twelve as a positive if especially if they like if they lean toward the sweeter end of, of the spectrum, if they like a sweet dram, would you think that would be a good starting point? Yeah, it was my starting point, I guess. So. if you went back now and told your old self, um, well, I guess hindsight's twenty twenty, but would you would you is there a lot different ones that you wish that you started out with at a 12 year basis than that one? Or would you kind of, are you glad that you took the journey that you took? No, I think it's a good starting. It's safe, inoffensive and cheap. There you go. I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's like, if you're looking for a way just to get your foot in the door and um, DHS says bourbon lovers tend to not like bourbon casks, in my experience. Well, I think you're correct. DHS only with the ones that are unidimensional, the unidimensional problem is, is, is where I think, um, cause I mean, if, 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 if I started off in the old Pulteney 12, for example, I, I think I would prefer the, the, the Glenlivet 12, just, just out of just the, the flavor profile subjective to me. Uh, but, the complexity would be maybe leaning better with the old Pulteney, but I don't think I would be able to appreciate or get all the notes out of it like I would. Oh, sorry. What I was going with with the bourbon loving thing, if, if, if it's a cask that has uh, something else with it, I think that they will still like, like if it's a bur ex bourbon with uh, some sherry or ex bourbon with uh, some sort of um, influence on it, I think they would still enjoy it. Uh, kind of like what Bob Burb does. Um, hey, Steven, good to see you, man. You're late to the party, man. <laughs> About to turn it off. Um, <laughs> that's funny. But that's the... That's, that's Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I'm trying to think of, of who would, where would I shift somebody if, if they were starting in to me, I mean, like, like, like a good example of like the Glen Kinchy is a, is is a distillery that you've had before, right, Dream? Yeah. It, it's it's their twelve is a basic uh, floral bourbon, typical, you know, nothing out there kind of <laughs> offering. But if you gave me that, and you gave me, um, trying to think of another uh, basic twelve that's just kind of like. 
like if Dalwini, uh, I like the Dalwini 15 a lot actually, but if they had a 12, it would probably be pretty mild. I probably would, would still lean towards, I think, the Glenlivet 12 versus some of these other ones just because it's got a little more sweetness, a little more fruit, a little more coconut, a little more something to it, you know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would choose Glenfiddich 12 over Glenlivet 12. Glenfiddich 12 you like better. Mm-hmm. Not seeing I, 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 that's one that, that would be a good shootout. I have to sit down and with those two and see because I do like the Glenfiddich 12 too. I, I just, it's not as thin and it's a little more like butterscotchy. So. Yeah, it's got. It, it, I think it's a little more savory though, maybe slightly. Mm-hmm. But some, yeah. I mean, if you if you don't have a, a huge sweet tooth like I do, it, it, it might be the reason why you and, and do like that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a tough one. To, Dalvany twelve double wood is a great transition. You see that that's one that I I just didn't do it for me. Uh, I know a lot of people love the Dalvany twelve double wood, but when I tried it, I was like, what else is there? It just seemed really extremely unidimensional to me extremely woody had a you know did have a, a little bit of a, a bourbon aspect to it but once i had the uh there was a 17 that was so much better i thought than the 12 i know it's five years but still i mean i thought it was like it wasn't like this it was like this and I, I couldn't even measure the difference of quality between the two and the complexity i thought but what do you think, Dram? Do you remember the the Balvenie twelve double with the se- uh, versus the seventeen or whatever it was? The seventeen double wood and the twelve double wood. Yeah. Yeah. I did, like the seventeen a lot. Do you like? Do you don't you think that they're like not even close comparatively? I mean. Yeah, they taste pretty different. It doesn't. I mean, the seventeen doesn't just taste like an older twelve. It's pretty different. <laughs> I guess that's what makes it so special because I do think that one's a really damn good one. But bourbon lovers are the baby palates of the whiskey world. Dry right drinkers are the psychos. <laughs> Swami's crazy. <laughs> These fuller bourbon scotches are terrible transitions. Bourbon lovers like liking witty whiskey. Shocking. Well, yeah, florals. No, no I, I agree. I'm not a. I'm not a fan of the of the of the florals. Uh, mm-hmm coming from transitioning from a, a bourbon to that would be a bit of a shock, but I'm just thinking that the fruit is what a, a bourbon drinker would appreciate. I think that's why Mike loves the ball Blair 90 so much is because yeah, it, it, it does have that, that similar profile, but it's got a boatload of different types of fruits that are going on in there. I miss the, the Balvenie 15 single X bourbon. Yeah. I, I love their, um, my favorite Balvany, just just a basic one, not talking tune level, but their basic Balvany, the the sherry uh, fifteen sherry single cask. Oh my god, <laughs> it's like one ten, one twenty a bottle, but man, it's damn good. What's your favorite Balvany that you've had, minus the tune level kind of stuff, uh, Dram? Uh, I like the seventeen level wood. Same here. Do Do you like the fifteen uh, single cask sherry though? I do. Yeah, it's good. It's not one of your favorites, though. No. Oh wow. Okay. Do you like uh, a lot of sherry influenced whiskeys? Mm-hmm. You do. Okay. I guess just the profile just didn't hit you. Um, I mean, it's good, but there's a lot of good sherry cask whiskeys out there. That's true. <laughs> I guess I guess I was thinking that for that price level, the one ten, one twenty. It's hard for me to think of a fifteen single. Sherry, that's that's that Remember price. Not, not single barrel, but yeah, Glendronach fifteen. True. I need to see. I, I have had the old one a long time ago. I need to get my hands on a new bottle, the new one. Uh, it's killing me because every time I go and look for it, it's all sold out. <laughs> it's a good thing for Brown Foreman, but a bad thing for me. Pete Week is good, yeah. The the uh, the fourteen I remember being good. The seventeen I think was the other one I had that was good. But he's not a fan of the Pete Week. I'm surprised. Balvenie's Pete, 
even not being an Isla or Campbelltown type of distillery, I still like their peat profile. And for me to get into a peat profile that's not there is 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 pretty rare, actually. <coughs> What's your favorite peat like uh, taste outside of Isla Campbelltown area? If you can think of one, I think the Ben Ryak stuff is pretty good too. Look at my list. Yeah. The, um, I mean, if we're talking like heavily peated stuff, that's not Isla. Well, it doesn't have to be heavy, heavy, but just like, you know. No. Ben Romix are slightly peated. Oh, the Ben Romix? Oh, Ben Romix is really good. The Imperial, that Imperial uh, 10, man, is one of my favorite drams of all time. It's like top notch. I'd love to. Do you have any of their older stuff? Le Chegg. Well, Chegg's really, really good too. Yeah, that's a good point. That eighteen, uh, that eighteen was was spot on, lovely. <laughs> the uh, yeah, long row. Oh yeah, long row. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. That's true. I I, I was I was trying to think of of some that, but well, long row is Campbelltown though. But yeah, I know what you're saying. I was trying to think of. Uh, <laughs> do you have any? Have you had any of the older Benromics like the? I've I've only had the ten. I think I've had the fifteen, but I haven't had anything like uh, eighteen or around that level. Have you had any? Do they ha do they have anything that that's that that old? I think fifteen's their oldest, like standard. It's gonna be lovely to see what they produce on the post fifteen level, man. Because they're they're even their ten is like, God bless, it's so good. I like it better than Talisker, but don't tell Talisker that. <laughs> Fire and Kane had some nice peat. Yeah, that was actually, uh, I was surprised about that bottle. I didn't think I was going to like it much at all, uh, that Glenfiddich Fire and Kane, but it was actually pretty good. It, it took me a little bit to warm up to it. Once I had a few sips, I, I think it, it turned out to be a pretty decent glass. Do you like that one, Trim? Uh, I've had it a couple times and it was okay, but I didn't like it enough to buy a bottle. Yeah. I think it was on uh 50 ish uh, price point. I yeah. only reason I went ahead and pulled the trigger one, I think it was because someone was doing a review on it and I wanted to sip it at the same time kind of thing. But if, if I went out and bought a, a Glenfiddich right now, I tell you what, I do. I did fall in love with their bourbon wood uh, 160 a bottle. It's uh, the Age of Discovery, 19 year. Hmm. If, have you ever had that one? No, I haven't had it. Oh man, if you're a Glenfiddich fan at, at all, and appreciate the 12 man. That 19 bourbon wood. Make sure it's the bourbon wood, not the uh, Madeira or the. Uh, they have one more in that series. I forgot which one it was, but. Uh, the bourbon one is so like I'm trying to think when I when I tasted it it was it was like a pecan Danish type of uh, experience it, hot out of the oven it was perfect it was sweet it's on the sweeter end of, of even a Glenfiddich it, it's not as savory maybe but uh, I thought it was awesome <laughs> for Pete outside of Isla he likes. Uh, the Long Row, of course, La Chague, Italisker, yeah. Holland Park. Holland Park does have some decent uh, heathery peat. It's, uh, it's kind of its own it. thing. Huh? I haven't liked Highland Park recently. You haven't liked it recently? Mm -mm. The uh, The newer stuff they just started releasing? Yeah, it's all just been mediocre. I haven't thankfully had to go and get any of the new new stuff because I, I still had the 12, 15, 18 old style uh, bottles. But uh, the only newer stuff that I had um, was the Valkyrie was kind of, eh, I appreciate the espresso finish on it, but it was just a little too short and dry. The Valk Father I thought was a little bit better, but still an AS still had some, uh, still a little chaotic i thought with uh, the profile but uh, yeah I've, I've heard mixed reviews on the uh 12 15 18 new um make and it's, it's kind of scary because between old pulteney bob blair highland park 
there's a lot of distilleries uh, that are doing some new lines, and I'm like, man, if they're not as good as the old stuff, what are we going to do? <laughs> Have you had any of the new Mortlock stuff at all? No, not yet. I've been meaning to try it, hoping they're, I mean, they're priced better than the last time they tried doing a, like, distillery bottling stuff. You know, with the rare old and the 18 and that were ridiculously priced. <laughs> yeah, I agree. The, um, the only one I had was a, a classic cask 11 year, which was not, it was very savory, sourdoughy, just kind of uh, didn't really hit the spot. So then I thought, well, I was going to go for the rare old or, or the 25, whatever it was. But like you said, they were priced like crazy. Now they have a new um, 12, 16, 18, and 20. Yeah. And I saw the 20 recently here in DC. I saw it for $200 straight, just flat. I'm thinking, well, that's a big gamble. <laughs> but I know I'm going to like it a lot better than the 12. The 15 might, I'm sorry, the 16 or 18 might be better to start with. But I might be kicking myself for not getting the this uh, 20 for 200 because that's a good price comparatively what I've seen other places have it for. So I was wondering if it was worth the pulling the trigger for it. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't spent my money on them yet. DHS has got rare sitting on the shelf for fifty nine oh four and not moving. <laughs> That's cheap. The one it used to be. Yeah, it was that one was like what one twenty or something when it originally came out. Yeah, 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 easy. And then I remember, you know, a year or whatever later, it was at Costco by the pallet for like. 40 bucks. Oh, wow. That's okay. nuts. Well, hopefully the new stuff is a lot better quality than the old, if the old wasn't. I mean, I've heard people, it was one of those love it or hate it, like if you like a meaty, savory type of dram, you'd like it, but I'm not sure if the new stuff is anything like the, uh, the that same profile. Has anyone, have, you, have any of you guys had the new Mortlock stuff, either the 12, the uh 16 or 20 or any of those i'm just curious because if you had i'm just curious to see if the profile has changed at all it's like dram's getting something when you were a price at mccallan prices nobody cares who you are yeah that's true unless you're mccallan they might sell it out but hmm. what you got there dram oh uh, nothing i was uh grabbing my phone Almost time for me to go. So. Yeah, I gotta get, get going too. I gotta work tomorrow, but I've had the sixteen that gives and give me an independent bottle over it. So, Stephen, you've had the new sixteen of the Mortlock series, and if you already are seeing giving you an independent bottle over that, man, well, I guess I'm I'm glad I didn't pull the trigger on the twenty because um, sixteen and twenty is only four years, and it's probably not that huge of a difference quality wise, but. It, it, Steven, also a question for you. Is it the same savory, meaty uh, profile that it, uh, like the old stuff, or is it a different profile? What did you get out of it? Uh, what didn't you like? What did you like, if anything, about it? And what's your favorite uh, independent bottlers? Like, I know Dram's a f fan of the old particular and the uh, signatories. Um, I like those. I like exclusive malts. Uh, they're not around anymore, I don't think, but you can still find their bottles in a lot of places. Um, I'm trying to think if uh, we talked about, I think, Adelphi being a decent one. You don't see them too often, though. Cadence heads, yeah. <laughs> what do you like, Steven, as far as uh, the independent bottling? And tell me about the uh, profile when you get a chance to type there. Hopefully, he didn't have to go or something. I'll give him a couple, just a minute or two to, to, to talk and then we'll sign off. But I really appreciate it, Dram, sitting uh, with me going through these. And uh, the, uh, yeah, it ends up being, a, a, I think, about a solid B. But that's that's pretty much what I expected it, it to be. They, they're really good on, on consistency because they're so big. They have a good variety. The age statements, the availability is, is, is outstanding. But... They just got to work on the taste, the value, and the craft a, a bit. And I think that they'll be able to uh, get closer toward 
some of these uh, more crafty distilleries, I guess is the word for it. <laughs> have you had any uh, of the new stuff, uh, uh, Dram? Like, have you have you got your hands in any of these newer distilleries, like Elisa Bay or uh, Ardmaturin um, or uh, Daft Mill or any of these guys? Have you took a spin on any of them? No, well, haven't seen them around. So. I will tell you, uh, just by first uh, hand, uh, he says, uh, Senatory, Cadence Head, Single Cast Nation, Gordon McPhil. Okay. Uh, Stephen, also, don't forget to tell me what you thought as far as if the profile was like the old Mortlock profile, the meaty savory, or if it was uh, different. What did you like? What didn't you like about it? Go into detail if you don't mind there. Um, just on a, on a quick. Uh, drive by often Durg, i would be very very iffy one i probably wouldn't buy a bottle of anything unless you you know had the tasting and already liked it kind of thing elisa bay is worth a look at i think they're pretty good uh alta Vanya, i haven't had their regular distillery bottle yet they just have one i've heard it's kind of a mixed bag it's a iffy and until i'm looking forward to seeing what they produce because they're in this very very south border with uh, England and they are about to I think release something if they haven't released something already the armature and stuff is good that's definitely worth a look uh, the King's Barn stuff is good it's definitely worth a look um, trying to think of anything the Daff Mill uh, that is, is worth a look um, Eden Mill, I've had a SMWS bottle from, but they uh, wasn't a distillery bottle. It was good, but I'm not sure what their regular stuff is like. I'm trying to see if anything else stands out as being a new one that uh, I've been lucky enough to try. I'm interested to see what, I'm interested to see what this lag is. This is LAGG. It's like an island distillery that's new. I don't think that they've got anything out yet. Uh, anybody else here? Have you had any of the Wolfburn stuff, uh, Tram? Yeah. The uh, do you have a favorite like Aurora versus another one, or were any of them stand out to you that were memorable? Or were they all kind of the same? Um, no, I, I enjoyed all of them. Um, I've only, I mean, I own the very first thing that they released. It didn't really have a name. It was just Wolfburn. Inaugural release, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I've tried a couple of the things they released after that, which were fine. I only tried them like once, so. Gotcha. But they were good for, you know, being what, three to four year old whiskey. So yeah. I think they're going to be doing some interesting stuff down the line. Where are they at? They're Highland, aren't they? Yeah, Highland and independent owner. I wonder, I guess this is some group of, uh, Hmm, I wonder who runs the show there. I guess it's probably just a group of uh, whiskey fans or something that decided to start a distillery. Hopefully they, they end up being like Springbank because that's uh, independent too where you never know what you're going to, you know. It, hopefully it's uh, someone that loves whiskey that makes a, like Kilholman, same thing. Um, you don't need a big business to do a good whiskey, obviously. <laughs> The best one out of them so far, if I had to pick a, a, a rookie of the year, we'll say, is probably. If I had to pick one, I'm thinking that the. Um, man. That Armaturin was pretty good, but the Kings Barnes probably was the better one. Elisa Bay was really damn good too for inaugural. I guess the Elisa Bay is probably the one I would probably steer toward when someone trying if they saw it before the others. Uh, Kings Barnes probably second. Armaturin's probably third. Uh, the Daft Mill was really good too, but it's been so long since I've had that one. It was an, a lucky auction that someone won off their inaugural. Um, but it was uh, it was actually pretty decent. So those are the distilleries that I would keep an eye on when uh, very soon having like a five to seven year old type of offering because they've already had their three and maybe even a five uh, at this point already. 
And some of these I haven't even heard of, like Twin River is like a Highland that uh, supposedly is out there. I've, I've, and we did a tour of all the even small ones, and I think these are really, really new ones that haven't even started making juice yet. Tora Vague, I've never heard of them either. Rose Isle, Race. It's cool to see there's lots of island distilleries coming of of out. Like Race, have you heard of it? R A A S A Y? Yeah, yeah, I know a few people who've had it. Do you know what the what they thought? Uh, they thought it was decent. Nothing crazy. I I think it's uh, it was pretty young stuff, and it was like wine cask uh, finished or something like that. Oh, okay. I remember seeing the bottle. It was a nice looking bottle, but gotcha. Yeah, that's a tough thing thing with these guys, the three- to four-year thing. It's really hard to make a three- or four-year whiskey extremely exciting. (laughs) But I give them kudos for at least trying like a wine cask or some sort of different than just turning on something for three years and being like, here you go. But on the other hand, though, it's kind of nice to just taste the core juice to see what it's like without any extras. So... That's a tough one. Well, guys, I really appreciate you all coming out. Uh, Steven says, uh, sorry, I don't remember the lock, Mortlock much. Just recall I wouldn't purchase it for the price. Well, I was just curious to see what the comparison was. Once we, uh, I might, I'm, I'm going to get a, a bottle of Mortlock at some point. I'll probably stick with the 18 and just go a little less price so I don't feel like I'm just throwing money out the window. Um just to have a bottle, though, because I am trying to collect at least one decent one from every distillery. So if I'm going to pick one, I'll probably pick the 18, maybe. Um, so if, if, if it's not my favorite, at least I feel like I haven't like gone crazy with uh, the experiment. <laughs> hey, Ryan, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. And thanks for looking at and live it with me, uh, Dram. Uh, next time we'll have to... Um, I'll try to organize maybe something with you and see if we can pick something that we can take a closer look at. You have anything off the top of your head that you'd like to look at in detail? Um, There's lots to pick from. <laughs> yeah. I'm good with most anything. Okay. I'll just surprise you then. <laughs> it might be Valvany. Valvany is one I've, I've definitely had a lot of uh, even travel retail wise and old stuff, the tunes, and we could get into that maybe if you're feeling Balvenie. <laughs> 29 year. Wow. Caitlin said very nice. Wow. That's, that's, uh, that's a hell of a price, man, for a 29 year old. That's the funny thing. Once you get around 30 years, it's hard for anything to taste bad. <laughs> I even had a Hague Club that was, I think, 30 years that actually was a decent tasting whiskey. <laughs> and you know who I'm talking about, right? The Hague Club stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't even know they were been around that long. And I saw someone had like a 30 or 50 year old version of it. I'm like, my God. Is this going to be any count? But it actually was a, a pretty decent, but even the grains taste pretty good at 30 plus years. Yeah, 25 to 30 year old scotch is like women, they're the best. <laughs> I don't believe you. What don't you believe? <laughs> well, we'll have to, uh, I'll, I'll definitely send you an email uh, and uh, try to organize uh, something. If not, do you know if you're going to be free next uh, Tuesday? Probably. Probably. Well, we'll try it. We'll give it a try. A force case scenario. If you're unable to make it, I'll just have a backup plan and I'll just, uh, I'll just save that one with you. Cause I know you're, you're, you're pretty much a, I won't say a Balvenie fan per se, but you have a lot of experience with them at least. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So you've got, yeah, I see the twenties back there. 17 double. Like I said, you've got a tune back there too. Don't you? No. I thought you did have a tune. No. Have you ever tried it before? No. If you ever get a, get a chance, to, I, I definitely would do it as an expo. That's where I had my, uh, I never had a bottle bottle, but uh, had a couple um, samples that way. And 
interesting. I definitely noticed the difference between like they had like the 1509 versus uh, another number. And the 1509 was definitely noticeably better than the other one. I'll have to look up and see what the difference was. It was a 1401 versus a 1509. I can't remember what the... But the, there's definitely the batch makes a huge difference in quality. And sadly, they're always the same price. So you got to be careful about that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've heard good things, but I don't think I'd spend that much money on a Balbini, So Yeah. That's true. Well, thanks so much, uh, DHS, Stephen. And... Uh, and he's got the tune number four, Samuel, and everybody else has stopped by. And uh, thanks for hanging out, uh, Dram. I'll see you here hopefully soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, man. Take it easy.